Hey guys, it's Ann over at Plant Obsessed, and today I'm going to do something a little weird, and we're going to do a book review. So I have my Kindle here, and I have my 35th anniversary edition of Worms Eat My Garbage by Mary Applehoff and Joanne Alzowski. Forward by Amy Stewart. Okay, so I have purchased the Kindle version, and it has... Um, quite a few online links as well as diagrams. Uh, basically one of the reasons why I wanted to do this was there's a lot of people who say where do you get your information and what you know where do you get it. Well um, Amazon is where I get most of my books for my Kindle um, and I think the the gold standard of warm books is probably this is the original Worms Eat My Garbage. Um, this copy is obviously digital. Uh, cost, I don't know, 15 or 18 dollars whenever I got it. And it has a great deal of information, not just um, for absolute beginners, but also for people who are at different stages of their, their worm path. So, um, you know, the chapters, I'll just kind of run down what the chapters are. won't give away any of the copywritten material, but uh, this book is definitely worth purchasing at double the price. I think that there was quite a few aha moments that I had in here that, I, you know, after a couple of years of experience, I thought, oh, I should have read this first. So if you're seeing this before you've gone through two years of worm life, uh, you're ahead of the game. So, you know basically just going through the chapters it starts with a worm and tells you the history of what you know worms do and what they do for you they're not just for um, fishing you know and a lot of people do their worm business different ways so you know you can have anything from a very simple little tote or a little box or even outside and you can also get, you know, very expensive flow-through systems. Uh, this book has lots of diagrams for you to use if you wanted to build your own um, worm house. It talks about the difference between castings and vermicompost. Um, you know, and it also kind of goes through the, you know, what are your goals with your worms? Do you just want them for fish? Uh, do you want them for food for your animals or do you want to just for the castings and how the different approaches that you should take um, based on you know what are your goals it also goes through one of something that's very important is that you know how much time do you have to, to, to devote to this uh, how much hands-on maintenance are you willing to do and you know you have to be real with yourself this this hobby can be as easy or as difficult as you want it to be um, a lot of people have said that some of the things that I do are overly complicated and some people do things even more complicated than I do. And, you know, so if you just want a, a quick hobby, you can do it that way, but you have to alter your expectations. And this book has a really good breakdown of, you know, what are your expectations and what are your goals are. And um, so, you know, it goes through maintenance, low, medium, high, you know, what do you want to do? Um, what are the resources you need to build it? What kind of environment do you need? What kind of food do you need? Um, and also, you know, what kind of worms do you have in your, where you live? You know, because where I live in the United States, in the Midwest, what, you know, I can grow here indoors and outdoors as far as worms go, you know, are different. Like, anybody who watches my channel knows that I have African night crawlers that are kind of a pain in my butt. I paid a good amount of money for them. They do a really good job, but the truth of the matter is I have to keep them upstairs with the people. Whereas the rest of my red wigglers, European night crawlers, and blue worms, I can keep in the basement, you know, and their large vermi bag is not a piece of furniture in my house. Um, you know, and it goes through a lot of things that people worry about, like pH, um, ventilation, what bin should you buy, and it goes through that in really nice detail, and it also you know, kind of gives you an idea of how many worms do I need to get this started. And for my household, you know, how many worms do I need just to take care of my, you know, vegetable and, and fruit waste. So, you know, there's a lot of good information here that, you know, I think quite honestly I didn't think about when I got started. Um, 
which, you know, sometimes I'm a cart before the horse kind of person. So, you know, it does have really great diagrams. Um, gives you what you need to purchase to build different things. Goes through the different kinds of bedding and their opinions on it. Um, goes through a lot of good things about paper and ink and, um, you know, even what you can put in as far as natural bedding. Talks about animal manures, you know, advantages, disadvantages, that sort of thing. Um, goes into, you know, the grit situation and what is good, what's bad, um, different kinds of worms. Goes into a lot of detail there and also gives you links to um, different resources if you want to know more, which I think is really great about the online edition, is that it contains links to go to um, different places to find out more if that's something that interests you. You know, it also talks about, um, depending on if you live in a subtropical or tropical area, what might be considered invasive and, you know, um, potentially, um, much to my surprise, you can even get in trouble for importing kinds of worms that are not native to your area. Like it, it mentions in Wisconsin, it's not legal to import certain kinds of worms. Um, goes through with the baby worms and the reproduction rates. I'm just trying to flip through really fast, but you know, a lot of the questions that, you know, people think about and don't think about when they're starting up a worm bin. Um, also, what can you do with your castings and um, what size, you know, capacity do you need for your house and for your wants. Um, doesn't talk about, you know, scaling up into a business very much, um, but it does go into the forbidden foods. It also goes into um, things like meat or bones and things and does a lot of troubleshooting. You know, if this happens, then this is your problem. It goes into worm bin pests, which may or may not really be pests. It, it even has like a nice little um, sheet you can print off uh, to keep track of your different worm bins and um, different aspects. So that's kind of cool. Um, so, you know, it, it does advocate that you spend a little bit more time documenting, um, you know, what you're doing so you know what works and what doesn't work. But it gives you a lot of very simple things and also very complicated things. It goes through the harvesting of the worms, the harvesting of the compost, um, goes into really good details. So that's great. Um, and I've probably read this, you know, a couple of times already. And, you know, there's, it's a good reference book as well. So it's not something that I would rent. You can do rentals on Amazon. Um, definitely would not rent it. I want to, you know, would want to keep this for forever. So, like I said, there's different kinds of screening methods and, you know, temperature ranges that you have to consider. And it has a really long section on frequently asked questions and it goes into the anatomy of the worms and food and um, a lot of urban legend sort of stuff. So getting back to that, I will cut this short and say that I would purchase this again. I've already purchased it. I've read it a couple of times. Um, and this is one of my go-tos for reminding me what I'm doing when I run into trouble as well as learning more because you can always absorb more information the more times that you read things. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with me and my worm book. And everybody, have a good day.